Welcome to the Randolph Community College Department of Photographic Technology. My name is Kevin Eames and I am currently working as the department head here. Uh, a little bit behind me, I was a student and graduated in 1996 from the program and went on to open my own business and run my own business for a number of years and then had the opportunity to come back and work here and I took it and I've enjoyed it ever since. So I want to share a little bit uh, with you about what this particular program is about. Uh, we uh, are here with the primary mission of training students to become professional entry-level photographers. Uh, there's a lot of things that people don't understand about our program, and one of them is how long we have been here. Uh, we have been here for over 50 years. That is a long run for any program, and we continue to, uh, to be a strong contender in the educational market in terms of photographic technology. Uh, we're fortunate that our founding fathers were very, very forward-thinking, uh, had the future in mind. They, they rolled with any change that came along in technology the best they could, and we continue to uh, thrive on that, that idea, but we also embrace all the things that it took to get to this point. Uh, photography these days is a little different, and we'll talk about that in a minute. We uh, do have a basic uh, understanding here that we are a technical program and not an art program. Uh, some students come in with the idea that we just run through the forest and take pictures of flowers and little lizards, but that's not really what we do. What we do is we really rip it down to the fundamentals of photography. Uh, there's a lot to learn in photography that doesn't have anything to do with the way a picture looks in terms of its emotion. But it's basically saying, I can capture this moment um, underneath some pretty hard pressures, different weird light and all kinds of challenges like that. So we are very technically based, and because of that, we start in very fundamental form with old school film cameras and black and white darkroom techniques and that's where everything came from and everything comes around that comes around but there's one thing that doesn't change and that's how light works in the field of imaging so light doesn't change so why should we try to change it um, other thing that we we have with this uh, program right now is we just we just went through uh, a very large renovation and have updated a tremendous amount of this facility made it extremely modern so we we have two 30 seat uh, iMac labs. We have eight digital editing suites that can do audio and video. Uh, we have a totally modern darkroom as far as traditional processes. It's brand new. Everything is, is great inside there. We offer inkjet printing uh, and part of our custom color printing which continues on in the second year so that students can print and know how to print and print well with the newer technology. We actually are 37,000 37, square feet large, which is a very large footprint for uh, any department on any college. We are very blessed here, and we know that we are blessed. The other things that we have that, that perhaps make us stand out a little bit uh, is the fact that we have a lot of equipment to train students with. Um, we are sponsored in some small ways by Nikon. Uh, Nikon loans us, uh, this year they loaned us over $30,000 worth of equipment so that our students can put their hands on it and learn from the most modern equipment, which really helps them when they get into the field. Sometimes our, our students have actually experienced more modern equipment than the people they go to work for. And so that gives them a little bit of a leg up. Um, we are always on top of the, uh, the Apple scene or the iMac scene in terms of using that for imaging. That is the industry standard. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing to see 60 Macintosh computers in two rooms. Uh, not many schools can boast of that. Uh, and it's, again, uh, software that we have to keep up with. Uh, students have a wonderful opportunity here uh, because of how much technology we have and how much they get to learn from it. Um, we are really looking at this movement in the industry in all of the fields, which is the movement into uh, multimedia production, which is more video and audio, and creating not only still pieces but creating moving pieces at the same time. Uh, this means that our photographers now have to have tool sets that are much bigger and much stronger than those in the past. In a strange way, uh, we're doing more work, uh, but there's lots more finger niches out there that we can get our hands into. 
and because of that we are constantly adding more to each of our concentrations so we do run in three concentrations all first year classes are the same classes it doesn't matter what you're going to be in second year everybody takes the same solid foundational classes the advantage to that is that each of those foundational classes really is a precursor to the second year concentration classes so you get kind of a taste if you think you want to be a commercial photographer and then you get into the lighting classes and you find out you hate being in the studio but you love running around outside you may want to change your major to photojournalism uh, and, and conversely if you really enjoy working with people much more than you enjoy working with things in a studio that are not really animated then maybe portrait studio management is the one you should do so between uh, commercial photography which is the photographing of ideas, concepts, and products, to photojournalism, which is telling stories and doing news pieces, to portrait studio management, which is telling life stories and creating relationships with people and saving memories and pieces of time for families. Those are three, uh, three of the biggest places that we, we look. And there's a difference in each one of them in terms of how personalities kind of go with that. One of the things that we do have uh, that I say is pretty amazing, but it's been in 50 years in the building, is where some of our people have been employed and where they get work. Um, it's very large. Now, over 50 years, I'm going to miss, oh, probably 90% of the places people are working. But one of the things about photography is, is that self-employment is one of the largest employers. And so statistically, you're not going to see that. If you look in the Bureau of Labor Statistics, it's not going to come up. Uh, they're going to be looking at people that do more high school portrait photography or school photography. Those are the ones that they look at. Um, that's not what we teach. We, we really don't have any problem with people doing that, but that's not what we teach. We are looking for a little bit bigger and stronger things. So the places that we have that folks will work other than being self-employed, um, most of the major studios in Greensboro and High Point, uh, which is almost the photographic center of the world, more pictures taken there than any other place due to the furniture market, uh, we have many, many students that are working in that field over in those areas, and they're very, very good photographers. Uh, we also have a lot of little specialized areas that people don't think about when it comes to photography. Uh, most people think it's all about the fashion or the food or the cars or the wedding, but there's other little niches that occur and one of the large niches that we have quite a few people in is the world of ophthalmic photography. So ophthalmic photography is taking pictures of retinas, uh, doing uh, eye ocular scans, uh, doing surgical uh, things, not surgery, they're actually documenting surgical um, procedures. And it's all about the eye and so we have people at Carolina Eye, we have a lot of graduates at Carolina Eye. We have graduates at uh, Duke Eye Center. We have graduates, did have graduates at South, Southeastern Eye, which is no longer here with us. Um, we've had people at many different hospitals over these years because prior to this, uh, surgical photography was, was a niche. It was a good thing. Uh, other places that people don't think, uh, and we have graduates in, is the Department of Transportation. Uh, they do what is aerial photography. Uh, they're recording erosion, soil erosion, and mapping, uh, mapping the new highways, and it's all done from a plane. Um, it's an incredible field. It's photogrammetry, and not many people have met someone in photogrammetry that I'm aware of. I never knew that there were photogrammetrists, but there are. Uh, so that's another kind of a strange place. We have a graduate at uh, the Smithsonian Institute in Washington who does all their museum pieces. We have graduates at the, in the Raleigh Museum, the Museum of History. We have uh, graduates at the State Archives doing archival work, uh, which is keeping up with documents and pictures and making digital recordings of separate and different things there for the State Archives. Uh, we have graduates in the North Carolina Highway Patrol. We have graduates in, that have worked in the SBI, SBI, State Bureau of Investigation. Uh, we have people that are still working in the uh, County City Bureau of Identification, which is another law enforcement agency. We have people that are working in sheriff's departments and cities, such as Greensboro and the police department. 
And those are all areas that people don't think about needing a photographer, but you do need photographers uh, to document those things as they're happening. Lots of newspapers, of course, have employed our students for many, many years. Uh, we have some that have had 30-year careers in the newspaper business. That, of course, is changing a little bit with the times, but eventually, uh, without a story, without a picture, nobody's really going to be interested, whether it's a piece of paper or online. So you still have to have storytellers. Uh, we do have um, graduates at Our State Magazine right now doing their video work. Uh, we also have a student who is a former student who's Carolina Panthers photographer for many years. Uh, also, UNCG, UNCW, a and University, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. We've got them pretty much everywhere that you can think of. Uh, Western Carolina, got people out there. Uh, lots of different niches that you would never think uh, photographer would work. There's actually jobs for that. Uh, then we also have a corporate, or, a corporate photographer or two uh, running around in Texas and a couple other states. And that's where a corporation actually hires them to work full-time strictly for them uh, and doing pretty much annual reports and special training films or other things like that, which is what used to be actually many years ago is how they ran that sort of thing. Also we have uh, students, former students or graduates who are into styling, so whether it's styling food or styling sets, styling fabric, so there's some things that are available there and that's within the furniture industry or within the commercial industry. So you can see there's just lots and lots of places that people can can find a home in photography. But number one, most of the time our students are going to go out there and, and many of them are going to start in on their own and hang their own shingle and start their own business and freelance and find their spot. It takes a while to get to get quite good and they're willing to put in the time and the work. So that's kind of where our folks end up. We take on about 60 students in the first year program and it always starts in the fall. You can't join at any other time as if you're going to do the photography part. Uh, so we start with about 60. Sometimes we've been up into the 80s uh, but they, we know that at that point they're, they're not going to probably enjoy what they're doing. Uh, in other words, finding out we're too technical and it's not what they thought they should do and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, find out what you're good at and do what you're good at. One of the things that I can tell you that's nice is we start first come first serve. So your experience uh, with photography matters nothing at all to us. We really don't have a dog in that fight I think is one of the things they say. Maybe. Um, it's first come, first serve. We don't look at portfolios. And as a matter of fact, we don't look at anybody's portfolio because there are so many great photographers who don't know that they're great photographers yet and they don't have a body of work. They may not have been, been able to expose themselves to that sort of thing. Uh, we also have people coming into this program uh, at various age uh, groups. We have early college, high school students. It's kind of hard on them. Uh, but those who do it, are they're, they're told ahead of time they're going to have to work really hard to get through here. And those that embrace it do very, very well. So we're talking about 17-year-olds, 18-year-olds coming through here, uh, recent high school graduates. But then we go further. We also have people that come through here that have already earned a bachelor's degree. We've had people that have master's degrees. We've had people that have PhDs. I've got one actually this year that has a PhD. Uh, we've had several of those. Uh, we have people that have come in here with BFAs in photography and came here to learn the technical side of photography. So we're kind of, uh, we're kind of known for getting down to what is really essential. Uh, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Everybody starts everywhere. We even have, uh, this year we have a 67-year-old. And two years ago we had two 65-year-olds. So we are at community college. We are at every age. Uh, we've got people with children without children. So everybody's welcome. Come on board, we'll help you with it. Um, one of the things I can promise uh, you if you come into this program, and even the older uh, students agree with me when they get to the end of it, is I promise you that you will meet yourself when you are here. You will find out who you are, and you will meet yourself. And I know people laugh when they hear that, but the truth is that what you have to learn here to get good at what you're doing requires an incredible amount of persistence and fortitude. It is not hard. 
It's just you got to stay on the treadmill and you got to run with it. Um, we don't wait for things to happen. Things have to happen when we say they have to happen. Um, so there's timelines and deadlines, and, and it, you have to get your work in on time. So one of the things we have to uh, teach right away is what skills would you come out with? Well, the first one that we teach is patience. Uh, that's a hard one, especially for younger students. But patience is extremely important in photography. You have to know when to move and when not to move. You also have to know when to wait and when not to wait. There are a lot of times you're going to be on set waiting for two, three hours, and you still have to be ready to go at any second. Time management, that is a huge thing that you learn here. You can't, you can't be a photographer without understanding how to manage your time. Uh, it is crucial that you have good time management skills, and especially with the amount of volume of work you do here and the amount of time you have to spend on projects, you really have to have yourself uh, set up for success that way, and we, we coach you with that. Uh, being a photographer is being a problem solver. So you have to look at complex situations and be able to tear them apart, break them into little pieces, and figure out how to fix them. Uh, that's, that's your job as a photographer. You're really a troubleshooter and a problem solver. You're helping someone get what they want by figuring out all the technical hurdles you have to get through to get them to what they want. Um, especially working with some folks that have a vision, you have to say, well, that's a great vision, but we can't do it with this particular tool. We're going to have to go with something else. Uh, you may want to go to CGI, and we do have people in CGI, computer-generated imaging. Um, the other thing uh, that we have here is communication. Visual communication is very important, but also soft skills communication. How are you going to work at a wedding if you don't know how to talk to people? How are you going to sell if you don't know how to talk to people? Um, how are you going to communicate an idea that you think is far superior to another if you don't know how to communicate? So a lot of communication has to take place. Um, aside from just general imaging and learning what exposure is and all the basics of that. Uh, we also have a very large piece called digital asset management. Digital asset management is probably the, one of the biggest skills you have to learn and it has nothing to do with taking a picture, it has to do with archiving and recording and setting um, metadata in a flow that is going to be profitable for a company. Uh, Finding out where all the metadata is supposed to go, IPTC, which you would learn if you came here. So if you don't know what that means, that's a good time for you to just go ahead and apply. It's very easy, randolph.edu, just, just, just saying. Um, of course, that's, I guess, is that still a, I don't know. Anyway, what we want to look at with this um, also is that when it comes to data and salary, salary, the money, the money thing, there's too many ways that you can look at being a photographer to understand what money is. Many years ago when there were film cameras, and I, I'm a film camera person, I shot all my weddings with film, it's, and it took a different kind of mindset to do that, but back in those days there was very, very large business models and business approaches. We teach business here, business of photography, how to make a living at it, how not to give it away. But you have to think about what the folks that our students work with in the commercial industry will be doing single jobs for six figures. So it's not just, oh, you have a camera, you can take a picture. It's a huge production. So we're not really uh, what we're seeing now is that with the digital camera and the great phone cameras they have, this is all super technology and really is wonderful for families uh, to, to capture moments and to do things with much easier than the old days. Um, but at the same time, people think that they're a photographer because they have a nice camera and they can take a good picture when really that's that's really not deep enough. It's almost like saying, well, I have Microsoft Word on my computer, so now I'm a novelist. It's not the same thing. You still have to learn the craft and you still have to learn how to make things work. So when we're doing, um, when we're making this, the business decisions that we make as photographers, we are not making decisions to uh, sell our wares for very little money or sell our time for very little money. It's a hard business. It's, um, it takes money to get started, it takes money to continue, but also pays for itself. And one of the nice things about photography is if you have a camera in your hand, uh, and a few simple tools, you can go out and make a living. I mean, you really can. You just have to push yourself into the position that is going to make you some profit. 
down the line. Um, many things are going to change, but many things will never change. And the one thing about imaging that is changing that I can see is that the collaborative, creative effort is getting to be much more valuable. Um, the technical parts of photography and pretty much anything in the world, uh, there's now an app for everything. So technically we still teach very, very hard, uh, hard and fast rules because you have to be able to troubleshoot. But at the same time, what people are looking for in a very qualified photographer is the creative partnership that happens when you're working with a client. And so to come up with ideas and to be able to listen to their ideas and figure out how to make all these ideas work to the best possible product that you can, uh, that's really where the value of the photographer is going. It's going into their head and their heart. Um, but you still have to know what is possible and what is impossible in the technical world. Uh, and that's kind of what sets us apart a little bit. Uh, I'm proud of this school. Uh, I think it's one of, the, one of the greatest values for your dollar that you could ever find in terms of a technical program. Um, the tuition is, is very reasonable. The lab fees are very reasonable. Supplies, they're going to cost you, and that's just being up front with you. Uh, things cost money. Um, there's not many degrees you're going to get in a technical field where you're not going to have to buy a tool. If you're in mechanics, you got to buy tools. If you're in machining, you got to buy tools. So it's no different than any of those. Um, it's just people don't like to look at it that way, but it's true. <laughs> you have to buy tools. So long story short, with all of this, I think for the value and for the experience, uh, this program has a lot to offer people that are interested in imaging and a career in a creative endeavor such as this. Uh, and I, I would strongly suggest that you hook up for a tour, uh, give us a call, go to randolph.edu and, and look at our program, see what our course lists are, and we'll be happy to talk to you anytime. Uh, hope this helps you a little bit, and we'll see you on campus soon.